in in darkness I summon thee one bite and all your dreams will come true. <laughs> Villains tend to be an outlet for animators to go nuts. Walt Disney wanted to have the villains in his animated films be interesting. There had to be something about them that you recognize as a human quality, something that is beyond just bad. The villains in Disney films, they're very special. Every film that goes by, the first thing we do as animators is, oh, who's the villain in the movie? And what kind of unique things can we have them be doing? The villains are the most expressive ones. If it wasn't for the villain, everything would be normal. The prince would marry the princess and they would be happily ever after and you wouldn't have a story and you wouldn't have a movie. Some of my earliest memories are watching Disney films. When I think of my favorite Disney villains. Poor Roger is your bold and fearless Sir Galahad. <laughs> certain moments still stick in my head. Listen well, all of you. Before the sun sets on her 16th birthday, she shall prick her finger and die. And as I became a student of animation, a lot of the scenes that I would always be drawn to, they ended up being Mark Davis scenes. We must go to the dungeon and cheer him up. Mark Davis came to the studio based on his ability to draw animals. He did flower in Bambi. He can call me a flower if he wants to. The strange thing was that they needed people who could draw well so badly that I drew very few animals. I got into the thing of having to do human characters, uh, uh, leading ladies, so to speak. <laughs> like Cinderella and Alice. I worked on the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. But I thought there was plenty of room. Ah, but it's very rude to sit down without being invited. Ward Kimball did the Mad Hatter and the March Hare. He got to do the fun stuff. <laughs> Mark he had to do mostly the pretty girls. And he wanted to do the villains. <laughs> Won't let him do Maleficent because Maleficent was very beautiful. But in the end, she turns into a dragon. So she went from beautiful to pretty bad. <laughs> the interesting thing about Mark Davis's characters is just the design and the power in it and the simplicity. Your eye is being guided right up to her face where you're supposed to look at. The costume itself was an awful lot of the movement. The original drawings I did, I had red on the black so that the decorations kind of tended to look like flames instead of lavender with the black as in the final thing. I have some copies here of Mark Davis's actual rough animation drawings before his assistant cleaned them up and they look nice and loose. Come, my pet. Let us leave our noble prince with these happy thoughts. Maleficent is just a mastery of holding things back. She's thinking and she's scheming and she's up to something without moving much. That's very challenging to do as an animator where you have all this subtext, but there's only certain things you could show an audience without giving certain things away. And then characters like Cruella that what you see is what you get. Enough of this nonsense. I'll pay you twice what they're worth. Come now, I'm being more than generous. This was one of the most fun assignments I've, I've ever had in the studio, I was doing Cruella de Vil. What? I warn you, Anita, we're through. She was a funny villainess, and uh, while what she was doing wasn't very nice, she herself was an entertaining character. The villain's entrance is one of the most sought after things to animate in a film, because it's that moment showing the character in a nutshell. <laughs> Cruella de Vil wearing this gigantic fur, and at, at every turn that she does, this fur is just swinging around her, and it just adds so much life. Not a very simple thing to draw, because he divided up this fur coat in all these sections. In looking back at Disney history and comparing the early villains to maybe some of the later ones, in my opinion, some of the earlier ones were really the scariest. The Devil in Night on Bald Mountain and Fantasia it was probably as scary as it gets. 
Introducing the only marionette who can sing and dance absolutely without the aids of a string. Stromboli was a mix. He was funny because he had this roly-poly body, but he also had business. There. Throughout the 50s, when I think of, about characters like Captain Hook, there was more comedy that came in to entertain people. Stand by, Smee, while I take a look around. When you look at the films, starting with the early 60s, like 101 Dalmatians. Blast this pen! Blast this wretched, wretched pen! Ah! And Sword and Stone. Marvelous! Oh, 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 oh. Boo! Those were directed by Wooly Reitherman. I guess his take on villains was a bit more on the comedy side than, than scaring the popcorn out of children. Yeah, I certainly favor the humor. I think that we're in the business of entertaining people. The first villain that I did for Disney was for Beauty and the Beast. It was Gaston. He was interesting because he didn't look like a villain. And then the audience finds out through the story that he is actually the, the bad guy. And the scary looking character, the Beast, is turning into the good guy. Andreas did a very good job at taking what worked in the generations before him and bringing that work and that legacy into his own work. My second villain for Disney was Jafar. When you see him, you know he's the bad guy based on his expressions. You know, there's a lot of dark colors in his outfit. I gave him these, these broad shoulder areas right here, which basically were a stage set for his parrot. The third villain was Scar in Lion King. He was probably out of all three of them the most evil one. Glad I caught you. Hans. Seeing how Hans was developing as a character in Frozen, every single animator in the department was putting in requests to animate Hans. Only an act of true love can save me. A true love's kiss. Because there's an illusion where when you're animating a prince, they have to be very one note and very charming. Crafting and orchestrating that moment of him leaning in, which you think is going to be the kiss. Oh, Anna. If only there was someone out there who loved you. Animators get behind that. Frozen was one of those films for us where it had the legacy moments of past Disney films with a modern twist. It's in our DNA. You won't get away with this. I already have. I met Mark and Alice Davis in 1984 at the Olympic Arts Festival. I just pinched myself and I said, this is Mark Davis I'm talking to here and spending the whole day with this is incredible. Mark came across as the grandfather you didn't have. Mark and Alice really embraced the company of young artists and invited them over to the house. And they were very generous with their time and their knowledge. For Mark's 80th birthday, I did a drawing. This is just a copy of it. And I told him basically how much I respect him, his friendship and his tutorship. I was also trying to show the influence he would have <laughs> through work like Maleficent on Jafar. I remember looking at the, the drawing, yet this uh, chuckle, he would just go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a privilege to work on films that I did. Walt said, I think when you do something and you do it well enough, the public's going to pay you back for it. But I think it's remarkable that these films hold up as well as they do and that generation after generation is still fascinated by them. Hey, Cinderella, 